Hey everyone, Nick here and welcome back to GamerTube, and welcome back to our final episode of the mainline story of our Little Nightmares character concept series. So this is the last episode that wraps up the mainline story that we're calling the Orphan Arc. So this wraps up the story of the Kind Child, the Trouble Child, the siblings, and all the other children from the Orphanage. Now this won't be our very last episode of Little Nightmares character concepts, but we will be doing a couple here and there, and these will just be one-off stories that won't really be connected with our main big storyline. But also do keep in mind that we will be making our community concept character very soon, so keep an eye out for that live stream that we'll be hosting. Now the character that we'll be diving into for the last episode, of course, will be the owner. So we're going into their location, their gameplay mechanics, and how this whole story wraps up. Now before we start today's video, a very big thank you to Jordan and Jade, the other members of GamerTube, who have really helped me out with these videos and lent me a whole bunch of support whilst making them. Also, another thank you to the artist Jafer, who designed a majority of these characters in the earlier days. Now they did a really awesome job, and we can't thank them enough for all the hard work they've put in. Also, thank you to the 3D artist Rotas, who designed our 3D Exterminator. And lastly, a very big thank you to all the viewers out there who tune in every week and watch these videos. We're so glad you enjoy them, and we really do enjoy all the support you've given us. As always, we will just state that we don't expect Bandai Namco or Tarsia Studios to really do anything with these ideas. These are just our own cool stories that we get to tell, and we hope you enjoy them. And lastly, before we start today's video, if you could please consider leaving a like and commenting, as it does help out a lot, and it is greatly appreciated. Also, do be sure to subscribe to GamerTube so you don't miss out on any of our future uploads. Alrighty, well, let's get into the main story arc ending of our character concept series with the owner. So before we start today's story, we'll recap some of the events and what has led to the owner. So the first interaction with the owner started with the Trouble Child. After their tragic event with the Exterminator back at the Orphanage, they set out to find the place where the Exterminator was sent from. This led them to the owner's mansion. Inside this creepy old mansion, they met the owner's maid. The Trouble Child narrowly escaped the maid as they finally came face to face with the owner. The owner has been around a very long time and has seen many things. They were once rich and powerful and practically owned half the Pale City itself. These days they just sit in their armchair hooked up to life support machines trying to hold on to their last days of life. As the Trouble Child approaches the shadowy figure, they were cornered by the Maid and the Exterminator. A series of events that took place in the mansion led to the boiler beneath the owner's private quarters to explode. This collapsed the floor beneath all of the characters, causing them to plummet down into the boiler room below. The owner was unfortunately buried by all the fallen debris. The Maid and the Exterminator desperately tried to save them, but they were too late. As the owner perished, so did the Exterminator and the Maid. In the end, the Trouble Child managed to escape the mansion and head off deep into the wilderness where their own journey would come to an end. They would finally meet their future self and discover their true identity as the Hunter. As for the owner, days went by buried underneath the rubble. Until one day, they awoke once more. They rise again with the newfound life force of some unwilling sacrifices. We now come to the kind child and the little sister. After their ordeal with the puppeteer and the tragic death of their sister's older brother, they set out to find their next destination. They've been travelling through the wilderness and into the outskirts to find the owner's mansion. The children aren't certain where they're heading, but the kind child's guiding eyes show them the way. After a day or two of travelling, they finally reach the owner's sinister mansion. They walk up the steps and approach the large front doors. They appear to be locked shut until they hear the large doors creak open but there's no one on the other side. They appear to have opened by themselves. The children cautiously walk through the doors, unsure of what awaits them in this large, lonely mansion. They enter the main hall. 
a large area decorated with many interesting artworks and artifacts. As they both look around, the kind child's eyes guide them to where they need to go. They enter through another set of doors and find themselves in a long and winding hallway. Throughout this hallway, they see many strange looking stone statues. Each statue seems to be a miniature replica of each of these strange individuals. Some of these statues they even recognize. Just as the children take a step into the hallway, they notice a tiny mouse scurry past them. All of a sudden, one of the statue's eyes open up and aims a beam of light directly at the mouse. The mouse suddenly freezes and turns to stone. It seems that whoever lives here doesn't want anyone getting through this hallway and into the room on the other side. In this gameplay segment, the player would have to quickly make their way through the hallway and avoid the deadly gaze of the stone statues. Just like the eye in the original Little Nightmares, both characters would have to avoid the beam of light or be turned into stone. Fortunately for the children, the beam of light from the eyes of the statues can only be projected from one statue at a time. They'd have to quickly hide behind multiple different objects to avoid the deadly beams of light. Once they've successfully dodged all the statues, they finally make their way to the doors. The children quickly hurry through as they enter the next room. They now find themselves in the observatory room. Both the kind child and the sister look up at the glass ceiling revealing the eerie night sky. The pale moonlight pierces through the glass and lights the room. As they look around, they see multiple books, objects, and a large telescope next to an old armchair. They both approach the interesting looking telescope when all of a sudden they hear one of the doors open. Both the children quickly hide as the shadowy figure enters the room. As they walk into the moonlight, it is revealed to be the owner. The owner is a frail individual wearing a long gown and a dark colored robe. They appear to be wearing a pale white mask. There's a tube protruding from the mask as it leads to an oxygen tank hanging from their side. Although the owner was resurrected, they still rely on medical equipment to keep them alive. The white mask and tank provided them with the precious oxygen they needed. As they walk past, the children can hear the sound of their respirator. Both the kind child and the sister stay as quiet as possible as not to alert this sinister character. They stare at the owner as they approach the telescope and adjust one of the dials. The owner then walks off into another room as the doors lock behind them. The kind child and sister come out from hiding and search around the room. They notice that the owner touched the dial on the telescope. Maybe that could be the key to opening the locked door the owner went through. The kind child takes a peek through the telescope and sees there's a key inside it. In this gameplay segment, the player would have to figure out how to get the key out of the telescope. The little sister pushes a set of steps over to the telescope dials and starts to move them. This puzzle would be very similar to a vault style lock. The player would have to feel the correct vibrations on the dial and figure out the correct pattern. Once they've figured out the pattern, the telescope opens up and pops out the key to the door. They unlock the doors and the kind child walks through. Just as they do, the door slams shut all by themselves. The kind child and the little sister have now been separated. The door is locked shut and both children can't open it. They both agree to find a way around and meet up elsewhere in the mansion. The kind child now finds themselves in the owner's living quarters. The kind child looks around the room, unaware that only a week ago this room was totally destroyed by the ruptured boiler downstairs. Now it looks like nothing even happened. They notice a stream of light glowing from behind a half open door. They quietly walk over and see the owner standing in their dressing room. The owner appears to be sorting through their old suits that are hanging up on a clothing rack. 
It's almost like they're reminiscing on their past. Now the owner is a frail shell of their former self. As they stare into a large mirror, they lift up their hand and remove a disturbing looking glove with their narrow fingers. The glove comes off and it reveals a wooden hand. The kind child stares in disbelief. They look down at their own hand but realise the owner's wooden hand seems a little different. The owner's wooden hand has a large crack in it, almost like it's been badly damaged. The owner continues to stare into the mirror as their eyes suddenly start to glow. The owner is fully aware that someone has been watching them this whole time. The gap in the door quickly shuts on its own. The kind child realises they're in danger and quickly runs to find the little sister. As they run through the mansion in a desperate search for the sister, they finally find them in the kitchen area. They grab the little sister and make a break for the front doors. But before they can, once again they hear the disturbing sound of the owner's respirator. The sister quickly points towards a dumbwaiter as they climb in and hide. The owner enters the kitchen in search of the little intruders that have wandered into their home. They approach the dumbwaiter and command it to open suddenly. But the owner was too late. The children have already descended down into the next area, the cold room. This disturbing place is where all the meat and food is stored. Wrapped up hunks of meat hang from the ceiling on cold metal hooks. The large metal doors at the end of the room seem like the only exit. But they appear to be locked shut. The children notice at the top of a stack of boxes is the door lock release switch. The little sister climbs up to go press the button and unlock the doors. As she climbs up, the owner suddenly enters the cold room. The doors unlock for a moment and then lock once more. The owner now has both the sister and the kind child cornered. As the owner walks towards the children, the sister continues to climb whilst the car child runs over to the meat hook control levers. In this gameplay segment, the player would have to quickly move the free hanging meat hook and position it so they can hook onto the owner's breathing tube and disconnect it from their mask. Just as the owner reaches for the sister, the meat hook attaches to their breathing tube. The car child quickly pulls back on the lever as the hook and the chain yank the tube out of the mask. The owner starts to panic as they desperately gasp for air. All of a sudden, the walls start to crack and crumble as large grotesque eyes start to form all around them. The sister pushes the button and they both quickly run out of the cold room. As the children navigate through the mansion and back to the front doors, they need to evade the disturbing mass of eyes and flesh that is quickly gaining on them. The large mass of eyes destroy and consume everything in their way. As they reach the front doors, they realise they're sealed shut. The eyes are quickly consuming the room around them and they need to open this door quickly. The kind child and the sister desperately try to open the door with all their might. It seems that the owner is using their strange power to force it shut. All of a sudden, the owner rises out of the mass of eyeballs behind them. They look to be in pretty bad shape and don't have much time left. As the dishevelled owner approaches the children, the kind child manages to open the door just a fraction. There's enough room for the little sister to squeeze through. As the kind child holds the door open with all their might, the owner raises their hand. The door slams shut, crushing the kind child's wooden hand. Staring at their damaged wooden hand, the kind child realises who the owner is after all. On the other side, the sister desperately bangs on the door and tries to open it. The owner grabs the kind child and raises them to their face. The kind child knows exactly who they're staring at. It becomes clear the owner is their future self. The owner needs just one more sacrifice to bring themselves back from the shadows of death. And who better a sacrifice than their former self? If they consume the kind child's life force and become one, they'd be restored to perfect health. They'd finally own that missing part of themselves. 
As the owner's wooden hand reaches for the kind child, their eyes begin to glow brighter than they ever have before. All of a sudden, all the eyes surrounding them start to glow as well. The owner doesn't know what's going on. Before they know it, they're surrounded by blinding light. In their last desperate effort, as they reach to grab the kind child, everything fades to white. On the other side of the door, the little sister continues to try and force her way back into the mansion. When all of a sudden, the door opens. They immediately run through and to their shock, it's all gone. Everything. The mansion, the owner, the kind child. All of it gone. Where once stood a grand mansion, now just a cold and windy cliffside. They walk out further towards the cliff and see in the distance a strange looking building. The sister stands on the cliff and stares out into the distance. This is where the sister's new journey begins. A journey I'm sure you all know very well. Alrighty everyone, well that was the main story arc ending of our character concept series. We really hope you enjoyed and if you did, please consider leaving a like and commenting as it helps out a lot and it's greatly appreciated. Also, do be sure to actually comment down below what you thought of today's episode and the overall ending of our character concept series. Alrighty everyone, well it's bye for now, but not forever. We will be back with our community character and we will do a couple of videos here and there, so keep an eye out for that. In the meantime, we've got plenty of awesome stuff planned, so stay tuned. Alrighty everyone, well, until the next video, we'll catch you later. Bye.